guys, Roy here from Roy Cruz Photo, and I'm here today at the Samchunpo Bridge between Sachun and Namhae. I was actually out for a drive on this really hot summer day, and I found this nice spot. And I thought I'd share a video with you guys about filters, because since the last video I made and the blog post that went with it, I got so many questions about what filters I use. So today I'm going to go through all my filters, and I'm going to show you what they do in real time. So the first question a lot of people ask is why use filters? Why use filters at all when you can do um, post-processing on it in Photoshop or in Lightroom? Well, I personally like to get things done in camera as much as possible and uh, filters help you to do that. And also some of the filter effects like polarization and blurring from long exposures, those are hard to duplicate uh, in software. Now the next question would probably be why do I use Koken? Well, I've been a Koken user since the beginning of my photography journey. Uh, since 2007, I got my first Koken filter, uh, and I've been with this system ever since. Now, Koken have been around for a long time, and they've got a wide range of useful and some funky filters as well. And I've always liked how the system works. It's a square filter, and uh, it basically uses the same filter for all of your lenses. And, uh, that makes it cost effective and it also makes it more versatile. Now other filter brands like Lee, Singray, they also make uh, square filter systems, but they are also much more expensive. So, you know, budget is always a concern and I've always stuck with the Koken system for its budget friendly prices, but at the same time it produces really good images. So that's why I'm still with Koken after all these years. Okay, so before we get to the filters themselves, I want to look at each part of the Koken P-Series system. Now, there are three main parts to the system. First of all is the adapter ring. As you can see, this is a 67 millimeter, and this is specific to the lens that you would like to mount the system on. So every lens diameter that you have will require uh, its own ring so that you can mount the holder, which is this thing right here. So the filter holder, uh, basically slides right on to the ring and the good thing about this is if you have multiple lenses with multiple rings you just pop off the holder and put them onto those and this right here is the three slot holder you can put three square filters in the front and then one more uh, special round filter in the back slot and the good thing about this is you can stack different filters. Koken also makes a wide angle version with only one slot and this is for use with wider lenses and it really depends on the design of your lens. Uh, once you put it on you might be you might be able to see these edges uh, in the frame so that's not good. So depending on the size of your lens uh, you may get vignetting and if that's the case you might want to get the wide angle holder which doesn't come out as much or you might need to upgrade to a different size. So Koken makes four sizes or series of filter systems. The P-series system that we're looking at today is the medium size system, which works well with mirrorless and smaller DSLR lenses. The range goes from the compact A-series to the larger Z-Pro and X-Pro series for larger cameras and lenses. Check your lens specifications for the system that will work for you. Now the last component of the system is of course the filters and you'll find several different kinds of filters uh, in the Koken P-Series system. first kind of filter that you will find are the square or rectangular ones. Again the P-Series filters are around 84-85 millimeters wide and that's a good reference when looking at third party filters as well. So they basically go into the slots, like so, and you can stack them. You can stack multiple ones. This is the ND right here. And another kind of filter that you may encounter are the round type filters. Now this is, a, this is an infrared filter, which I'll show you later. Now these are round so that they can be rotated, and they go into the back slot of the filter system which is pretty clever and you can have you can stack multiple filters together while keeping the ability to have 
circular filters that you can rotate, which is cool. And finally, here's an interesting one that you might encounter. This is a round filter in a square holder. Now this is actually a blue and yellow polarizer, uh, which I'll show you later. A little preview right there, the cool effect it has. Now here's the fun part. I'm gonna go through all my filters and I'm gonna show you their effects in real time. Meaning while I'm shooting video on this camera, I'm going to be putting the filters in. And that is actually another great reason to use filters. Uh, you can use them in video as well. So the first filter is the Koken P160 linear polarizer. They also make a circular polarizer, uh, which is supposedly better for autofocus systems, but I went with the linear one and they basically do the same thing. So as I bring the filter up to the camera, you can already kind of see the effect as I turn it, as I rotate it, you see the water darkening a little bit there. So I'm gonna put it into the back slot of my holder here. All right, so the filter is slotted in. So you do lose a couple of stops of light. Uh, earlier it was a little overexposed. So purpose, so the purpose of a polarizer is to reduce reflections. And in reducing reflections, it also enriches the color. So as I rotate the filter, this is with the least effect, as you can see, the sky is kind of white and hazy and the water as well. As you rotate the filter, you can see the sky getting bluer and the water also becoming a richer color. So that's what a polarizer does. Now the next couple of filters I'm going to show you are called neutral density or ND filters and I'm sure you've heard this term a lot and what they basically do is cut down the amount of light. The first one I'm going to show you is my P154. Uh, this is a three stop, not very powerful, but you can see it kind of acts like sunglasses. So I'll bring it up to the lens and you can see the effect right there. So they are essentially sunglasses for your lens and the good thing about these are they enable longer exposures. So as you can see, this scene has darkened about three stops and you will need to compensate that, compensate for that by either uh, longer exposures or opening up the aperture. So the reasons why you would want to cut down the light would be First, for long exposures, this is how you get the silky water and all those beautiful uh, silky waterfalls, moving clouds, and other things like that. So that's one. The second one is to be able to open up the aperture, like I'm doing now. Uh, and this is great for portraits. If you have uh, a fast lens and opening up the aperture would make the image too bright, pop one of these on and you'll be able to shoot at shallower depths of field and you get that nice bokeh in the background. So the next filter we have is the Haida ND 3.0 aka the 1000X aka the 10 stop neutral density filter. Now this uh, filter is a lot of fun because it cuts down so much light and you it lets you do long exposures uh, even in bright conditions like this one. So, as you can see, or as you can't see, the filter is so dense that you can't even see through it. It actually cuts light down to something like 1% or 0.01%. I'm not sure which one it is, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and slip it over the lens here. Boom. Total darkness. So I've just taken a picture and as you can see the water is silky smooth. Now the next filter is one I get asked about a lot. This is the Koken P007 infrared filter and this basically lets in only infrared light which is usually invisible to the eye. Now the good thing about this filter is 
that it allows you to shoot landscapes when the conditions aren't that great for landscapes, like in the middle of the day. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and mount this. And it is a very dark filter and uh, you will need do a few things to compensate. The first one would of course be long exposures, which makes for really cool shots. Uh, the other one would be to open up the aperture, like I'm doing now. As you can see, it looks kind of like night vision, but it gives a whole different dimension to the photos, and it gives them a surreal kind of feel. This is an auto white balance, which of course makes the whole image red, but, but I'm going to set it to custom white balance setting. So this is the custom white balance setting, which is a cooler blue temperature. And what you want to do with uh, infrared photos typically is to shift it towards the blue and to give you that surreal color. Now let me go ahead and take a photo. So the next filter I'm going to show you is the Koken P121S. This is a graduated neutral density filter. As you can see, it is dark on top and it gets lighter as you go down the frame. Now, this is a three stop and there are different varieties. This is the soft, uh, the soft gradation one. But the basic idea is to darken the sky, basically to balance the exposure as you can see in this video right here so I'm gonna hold it right in front here you can see just by holding the filter in front of the camera you get darker skies and that brings out some of the detail in the clouds and let me go ahead and slot this on and there you have a much more balanced image so here's another useful graduated ND filter. This one is the Format High Tech ND 0.9 RG. This is the reverse graduated filter and as you can see it's darkest, actually darkest towards the middle and it has a very distinct horizon. This is a special filter for sunsets and uh, that's when the sun and tends to be down here in this area so it uh, darkens that to make it more balanced. I'm going to go ahead and show you what it does. It's not the ideal filter for this situation with the bridge and everything but uh, as you can see it really brings down really brings down the exposure towards the horizon line but in this particular situation, I would not use this filter. As you can see, the light is way unbalanced. The water is too bright and the sky is too dark now. So I would use this in, I would use this more for sunsets, but I just wanted to show you what it does. Now we are down to my last filter. This is the Koken P173 blue and yellow varicolor polarizer. Now it's a little different from a regular polarizer in, in that it introduces color to the image. So I'm going to hold it up to the lens here and as you can see as I turn it you get yellow, you get blue. So that is a pretty interesting filter. I'm going to go ahead and put it in. Oops. Wrong slot. Got a little vignetting there. Anyway, this goes into the back slot. Compensate a little here. So there you go. So this is on the blue setting. And as I turn it, you can see yellow. Blue. And yellow. Now this filter is great for pumping up pretty bland sunsets. 
So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed that look into the filters that I use and I hope this answers some of the questions uh, that you might have had about the Koken P-Series filter system as well as the filters that I use personally. Now this information is also applicable to different brands of filters. Uh, you'll find the same kinds of filters, neutral density, polarizers, infrared, across all the different brands and they will pretty much give the same effect. So, as I usually like to do, I'm going to leave you today with some sample images uh, that were taken using the filters that I showed you today. Again, this has been Roy from Roy Cruz Photo. Thanks for watching, and take care.